My Fertility Path, brought to you by the Fertility Awareness Advocate Initiative. that it's possible to do so many IVF cycles without achieving the goal. Today on the show, we will be looking at what happens when IVF fails. The show is My Fertility Path and it is brought to you by the Fertility Awareness Advocate Initiative 5. This is the only show where we talk about real life struggles, the treatment available and the joys that come thereafter. My name is Nsi Kwetem and you're welcome to the show. Our guest today is Mr. Victor Diale. In a quest to complete their family, his wife and himself went through various fertility treatments bearing all the emotional and psychological trauma. They however found the strength in each other through their journey and he is here to share with us their experience. You're very welcome Mr. Diale. Thank you very much. How are you? Very good, thanks. Very good. So what was it like um, when you realized your wife hadn't conceived after a year in marriage? Well, so, um, so first of all, um, it's interesting that you introduced me as Victor Ngozi Diali because my wife is supposed to be here, but she's not. So I'm actually, I'm carrying my wife uh, inside of me. So she's, she's here in spirit. Oh, bless. And it's, it, it, was, it was an interesting episode in our lives because we, we have been very, very close. You know, we got married through... Uh, some very interesting circumstances. Please tell us we, a little We story. met by chance. Uh, I was working in a bank. She came in to do her industrial attachment. She was only supposed to be there for a few months. And then, you know, uh, someone found a picture on the floor, mm -hmm. brought it to me and asked if that was my sister. I said, no, I don't have a sister in the bank. I said, no, it's your sister's picture, isn't it? Oh God, I have goosebumps. I'm like, wow. Okay, so I took the picture and I started looking for the owner of the picture and that's how we met and uh, several years after, you know, we got married. We were expecting that within one year of marriage, we would have children and first year came and went, no child, second year, no child um, and, you know, we started to get worried but uh, I was quite confident that it would not go, going, it was not going to be a problem in our marriage. Well, you know, as a woman, she, she, she felt very bad about it. So I went through, you know, having to comfort her at night when she's crying. Uh, and especially when, you know, at the end of the month, when she sees the monthly cycle, monthly cycle you know, it, it, it becomes a moment of grief for her. And I knew I had to stand by her as a pillar, which I really did. Oh. Uh, yeah. Okay. It was tough. That, that's a beautiful story. Thank you. And um, so when, at what point did you think it was a fertility problem? When did you think you had to seek for help? Well, it's been a long time. You know, we married almost 20 years. So I can't quite remember. Yes. Um, I'm, sure she, I'm sure she, she will remember. Um, but it was after a few years, mm -hmm. probably in the third or fourth year. Okay. Um, we really started to, to think about, about it as a real problem. And the good thing for us was that we didn't start running all over the place. Okay. okay. We decided to go to experts. Mm -hmm. So we went to see doctors and then we went through the process and we had our first cycle. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't successful and that was devastating. Hold on. How did you feel yeah. when your first cycle failed? Truly devastating. Oh. You know, so, uh, as you know, as you probably know, IVF is not, it's not cheap. I know that it so has So it took a lot of our resources. And we were expecting and hoping, I mean, we're Christians, praying and trusting God that, you know, this was just going to happen, right, by faith. Hmm. 
Some people think IVF is not of God, but it, it is because the doctors can only do so much, right? Okay. So it, through the IVF process, they can just do something to make the, you know, the, 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 the egg and the sperm come together and then put it back in the woman. And then after that... In the fertilization as it is. And then, <laughs> yeah, and then after that, they can't do anything. No, they so can't. So it's, it's God. So, so I saw it as a very godly process. So we really took it as a godly project. And, uh, you know, after the prayers and everything and, you know, waiting for that one week or two weeks where we have to do a pregnancy test and about 14 we're, days or so. we're hoping for a positive result, but it came out negative. We were truly devastated. We were, I mean, but then we, we looked at it as, you know, one, one mountain that we had to surmount so. and then the burden we had to carry. And then we looked forward to, to life, you know, more positively after that. When uh, did you try again? Where? When did you try so when? again? When did you decide that you could try? Again. Again. So we, we, we had another cycle almost immediately. Okay. And that too was not positive. Okay. And after that, I said to my wife, you know what? This thing is not cheap. So let's just leave it for, for some time. So we stopped doing IVF. We were trusting God for several years. So we waited many, many years. And then uh, the third one mm -hmm. finally, finally came through. And now we have a fantastic bouncing baby boy. Uh, we, had a, we had a girl 10 years after, after we got married. So we had a girl. Uh, she's, uh, she's about 10 years old now. And then we have a boy who's just about 16 months. So he's 16 months old now. Yes. Did you do IVF again? Well, after the 16 months, not yet. Okay. Not yet. But um, it's, it's possible that we're going to have another one. Was the boy, was the boy, the was boy, the boy the, IVF the boy as came, well? The boy came to IVF as well, yes. Came to IVF as well. And, you know, for some reason, we haven't been able to conceive naturally, biologically by ourselves. And it just happens that we need, we need help. And I think that's something that a lot of people don't realize. Yes. That sometimes you just can't do it alone. You know, yes. And you just need the support of an expert, yes. a fertility expert. You did, yes, you need medical yeah. support sometimes. It and just, that's why they're there. Exactly. It just happens that way. Yes. Just like every other, you know, biological thing in our bodies, uh, we might need help. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story with us, Mr. Victor Diali. When we return, we will be joined by a resident doctor, Dr. Baramir Jai. When he comes, he'll speak to us in detail about IVF, what can cause the failures and how you can handle this. Welcome back to the show. You're still watching My Fertility Path. Earlier on on the show, Mr. Diali shared his experience through a series of IVF and how they dealt with it. We're now joined by our resident doctor, who's Dr. Bayomir Jai, and he'll be talking us through what IVF is. Should I say welcome again? Oh, yeah. Mm, why not? <laughs> You're welcome. You look lovely today. Thank you. I love your suit. Thank you. You know, I know I'm coming to meet you on the set, so... Uh-uh, doctor. <laughs> Thank you. So tell us, what is IVF? Well, IVF is one of the assisted reproductive techniques which involves bringing the sperm and the egg together mm -hmm. outside the body. Okay. Actually, that's what the meaning of in vitro fertilization means. It means fertilization takes place outside, outside. the body. And um, how many types are available? Oh, okay. There are quite a number. You know, we started 
the first one was in 1978. Mm -hmm. And after that, there have been so many variants okay. uh, from that, in the sense that in 1978, IVF was only for when there was a female problem, okay, when the tubes were blocked. Yeah. Then we had gone from there to finding solution for the male, which we call ICSI, ICSI. Where, which involves us taking one sperm cell and injecting it mm -hmm. into the egg. So mainly these are, but so many other variants have really cropped up, but these are the two main categories. So the ICSI and the, the IVF. IVF. That's right. So, um, for instance, a couple tries, like as in the case of uh, Mr. Jali, mm -hmm. they try, how soon can they try again? Oh, that really is a personal decision because oh. they could do it almost immediately. Okay. Uh, and there's no effect on the body? No, no, no. Because you see, the, the drugs that we use are the natural hormones. They're just given in a higher dosage than what the body will normally produce. So it's completely safe to do it even back to back if possible. The most important thing is, is the patient uh, psychologically ready for it. That's what we need to work on. As long as you're, you're good psychologically, we're, good, we're also good to go. Yeah, because it can be a bit, it's, it's draining actually, mentally. It, it, it is. I, I just think, look, I, I can only imagine how people would feel. But I know how they feel. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, this elephant in the room, I can, I can confidently say that I have felt it before. Mm -hmm. That's when IVF fails. Mm. My experience is, I don't know, for me it was, I just wake up and I realize, you know, that it didn't hook. <laughs> <laughs> no better way to describe no it. No better way to describe <laughs> it. And I, I looked at myself and I thought, oh, so this is really the cross I have to bear because mm. mentally, I can't do this again. I, I just... From that second, I started saying, I, I'm not going to do this. I really can't handle this. I, I was muttering to myself. And then I realized, wait, this is real. Mm -hmm. Then I'm tapping him. I'm telling him, listen, it didn't work. He goes, how do you know? I'm like, because I see signs. And we go back to the Of course it wasn't there. You know, to buttress what you just said now, I mean, there was a major review in 2017 yes. of about 56,000 women. We went through IVF in Australia. Yes. They went through about 120,000 cycles. And they looked at, they saw that about 30% of the people dropped out. Oh, yes. Because of the experience they had yes. in the first one. And that's why it's so important that before you go in, that you, you are psyched up. Yeah. To, especially to take failure when it comes. Yeah. And that's one of the things, you know, that we get in our own society whereby mm -hmm. sometimes, even when the doctor is trying to explain to the people that this can fail, they, all they're saying is, it's not my portion. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, they say that. And, and um, what kind of people should go for IVF? What do you think? Like, well, I think anyone can. Anyone can. Yeah? Anyone can. All right, doctor, when we return, we'll take some of the questions we've heard from you and on the streets. Please stay with us. We're still watching My Fertility Path. We still have with us the doctor, Dr. Bayomi Ajayi, the CEO of Nordica Fertility Center. But before we continue, would you be interested in IVF if you're struggling with infertility? Why not? IVF is not bad at all. If you're trying to conceive, and then um, let's take for instance for the probably five years you've not been able to conceive and IVF happens to be an option. 
I know of people that have tried it before and it's worked for them. So if I have a friend that has um, such issue or challenge, why not? So far, it's your baby. Even if it is IBF, the fact that it's, it's IBF doesn't mean that it's another person's child. It's still your own child. It's just the process. It's just the process that actually changed. It's, I think it's mostly driven by lack of education and enlightenment. People tend to stereotype and judge things. Therefore, topics like this should be sensitized constantly. Education, constant education. Talking about it, there's nothing to be ashamed of. A child is a child. So far, it comes through the technology. Whether it's coming through technology or not, it doesn't really matter. A child is a child. So when I see women in that case, I will use stories of people that have tried it in the past and they came out successfully. And I want to let people to understand that having a child does not necessarily mean you, you must be the biological mother of that child. No, you can still adopt a child. And to me, uh, the knowledge I have is that who comes out to be my parent is who made me who I am. I, I think that um, definitely all options should be explored. Uh, what typically um, I have seen in, in um, my experience is that a lot of people sometimes also get too fixated on the problem. So they spend a lot of money, so IVF is also not cheap. It's a fantastic op option if you can afford it. It's not always successful, but it does have a good success rate. So I think that if you explore all these options, it's good that you have a lot of options and you explore all these options, but then if that doesn't work, there are always other options, if you see what I mean. And me going through the process of having IVF done doesn't mean that I am not a mother. I'm still a mother. So IVF is not a bad idea. That was expected. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's check some of the social media questions. I think I have one because I quickly read it. Okay. It says, can I get luck with IVF as a woman who's 41 years old? Well, the, the simple answer is yes, but uh, the corollary to that is that your chances are not as good as somebody that's younger. Why? Uh, oh, because age. of the, we always talk about age and reproduction. So the chances are not as great as, but you could still have about 15% chance of success compared to somebody who is either in her early 30s, before 34, who can have up to about 40%. 40% so, chance For one cycle, but yeah, so that's... Uh, so this 15% is just one cycle? It's just one cycle. Yeah, that's, that's, that's tough. So there's another question. It says, I've had two failed IVFs and I am tired already. The trauma is hard to bear. My husband wants us to try, but I don't know what to do. Well, that is not abnormal. But some of the things that we try to say is that, okay, fine. What is the alternative? Okay, if you need IVF. So sometimes it's difficult, it's a very difficult bullet to bite. But with a lot of hand-holding, it's possible for you to do it again. And uh, one of the things that we also need to emphasize when you're going for IVF, that success is cumulative in IVF. Just like when I told you 15% for one cycle, for depends on your age group. Mm -hmm. Because the best that you can get for one cycle is about 35% to 40% when you're the, in the very prime of life. But if you do about three to four cycles, this could go to as high as about 69 to 80%. I can imagine how she feels because the truth is I know that men feel, you know, but they can't feel what we feel. Yeah. You True. know, the waking up in the morning, the looking at the certain time you need to inject yourself, all that takes a toll on you. So I can understand the trauma that she feels because she's probably looking at her partner and saying, she don't know half of what I've been through already. But, but, but you know the part to this, the, the what to look out for sometimes yes. is that what the that study that I spoke about, yes. what they found out was that women probably will have gotten about 67% more babies if they are persisted in doing IVF. So sometimes not just persisting, I know it's difficult to persist, mm -hmm. but not persisting robs us of the chance 
of success. So success. it's something that we need to continue to see how we can. So counseling is key. It's just too important. So what's the cost implication of IVF? Yes. We're always very careful about talking about cost because you know there is no uniformity in pricing. So you can only talk about one clinic. So mm -hmm. it's always it's some one thing I'm always skeptical about discussing. So it's better that if you choose a particular clinic, go there, have an, an inquiry. Most clinics do free inquiries. So it's non-biting. You can get the, all the information and mm -hmm. decide whether it's something you want to do or you, you don't want to do. Yeah, but per personally, I, I think that apart from the fact that it's um, cost, um, it can have a cost implication that can be a bit steep. I think that IVF is somewhat personal. It, it, I, I think it's a, you need to connect to the person, yeah, you know, it's kind of like a, the kind of energy you feel. Try. Right. That's that's what makes Fantastic. it for me. That's what it is personally. Yeah, I, I, that's I, how I, I agree with you, and that's mm. why I'm always skeptical about talking about definite figures. Definite figures. Because um, you need to see that the kind of people are the the people who are treating you are the kind of people that you want to be able to lay. You can trust that yes. because nobody sees sperm, nobody sees eggs. And so it's just based on trust. It is based on trust. Is it painful? Painful is not a picnic. It's discomforting. I think the the don't problem don't. more is I've more been psychological. There, because you are answering this question, I've been there, and I want to argue. Yeah, but I I think the pain <laughs> is even more psychological than physical. Yes, it is. It's, a men it's mental. Exactly. It's exhausting. Exactly. Mentally exhausting. Exactly. Physically exactly. draining. Yeah. Mentally exhausting. The, the pain's more... <sighs> and you know the fact that uh, your hopes are heightened mm -hmm. and then suddenly it's dashed when, the, when it comes down as... something that your back will say, Jabo. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Oh, Jabo. <laughs> oh, Jabo. <laughs> yeah, so... But oh. that's why counseling is so important, yes. even before you start. Coming to terms with the fact that this can fail. Yes. But it's, it's, a, it's a difficult pill to swallow. You know, it, it, it's, it, it's, 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 uh, it's funny that you say persistence. I, I've come across very persistent people, and mm. they keep trying. And I don't know where they get their res resilience from, but I give them kudos. Mm. Because... Some of us just drop by the wayside, really. Yes. You know, Even with counseling. Yeah, you, yeah. You I just, know, you I know. Just oh, yourself, yeah. This is it. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things that we, we, we need to look at about the decisions that are made. Mm. Because, you know, some people go over it again and again and again. And sometimes I'm very blunt with them to say, look, this decision you're making is not likely that will get any result from it. Mm. No matter how many times you do it, yes. you probably need to take some other decisions. But you will know that also some of these decisions are difficult. So, and that's why what we can do, the best we can do, is to hold them by the hand and try to lead them to cross the hurdle. But most of the time, you know what? When they've crossed it, I hear so many people sit in front of me and tell me, oh, just like Mr. Diali said, yes. Oh, I wish I'd done this a long time uh, ago. Oh, I know. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Jai. We appreciate your dedication in helping families and giving them the best decisions when it comes to what choices they have to make. My Fertility Path brings you all you need to know in your journey to fertility. Today, we talked about when IVF fails, what to expect and how to deal with it. Thank you all for watching and always remember, infertility should never define you. See or speak to someone today. My name is Ansi Kwerton. Keep sharing, keep educating, and I will see you next time. My Fertility Path, brought to you by the Fertility Awareness Advocate Initiative.